Okay, this is uh, TJ Snaiman again, and we are on part three of this diamond tutorial. Uh, what we're going to do now is take our diamond, starting with the biggest one, um, and array this um, this diamond along the curve. We're going to start off 3.8 down to probably about a two millimeter. I have drawn two curves, one on the bottom and one on the top for two rows of diamonds. So without further ado, let's start with our first command. It's called Array Curve Plus, which is a really cool command. Okay, we're going to array our diamond right there. Enter. It's asking me for a base point. Now I'm going to switch to a wireframe view because inside my diamond there's a crosshair to pick the center of the diamond. Get my intersection, snap, zoom back, pan down. <coughs> okay, path curves. Let me switch back my shaded view. Now I'm going to pick this one for the bottom curve, enter. Number of items is six. I want six on there. The base surface. I'm going to pick this surface because it has to flow along that surface which is kind of curved. Enter. And that's what it did. It placed six diamonds along the surface on this curve. It, f it flows along the curved center line and it flows the orientation of the surface. But I don't want a, a space like that. So first of all, I'm going to go to my spacing because I want these diamonds not that far apart. I want them 0.2 millimeters apart. Enter. That's much better already. Secondly, I want this one smaller, smaller, graduate down to a 0.2 millimeter. So I'm going to go to scale. This one is a 3.8 millimeter, which is perfect. <coughs> but my second one, I want a 3.74, and the th third one a 3.7. So I'm just going to space those to the same. So I'm going to go to my. Um, the scale node, these are called nodes, number one, to this one, and then we will enter that one. <coughs> it's asking me for a scale factor, so we're going down to 3.7. 3.7 divided by 3.8 is 0.97, which means um, we're going to scale it down. 0.97, enter. And now they're all adjusted, this one and the second one. The third one, I want 3.23 millimeter divided by 3.8, and that gives me a 0.855 scaling. So this node is the one, two, three. Two are the same, then the third one is a 3.7, and the fourth one is a 3.2. One, two, three. Oh. Let's start again. Scaling. This one. Enter. Fourth one is a 3.2, which is a 0.855. Enter. Okay. The, th the second last one, um, you can see how this is almost touching the side of my pennant. So this one we probably will make a 0.65. That's much better. This one is almost there. I just want it a little smaller. Um, so this one will make 0.55 and see how that works out. That looks perfect. Now, I have to scoot all of these down. So we might have to scale this one more time because as I'm going down to this wedge point, um, this is going to get closer to my surface because ultimately what I want to do is I want this to be a channel that's holding these diamonds in place. So um, so we have to scoot this a little bit up to the right. We are going to use um, path, end adjust, and select node, end node to adjust. We will be doing that one on the curve. We are following this curve, and we are just going to scoot this one up a little bit there. So my whole array is just going to scoot up a little bit. And actually, that's almost exactly where I wanted it. Now, what happened with this last one, as you can see, because I screwed this up, I might might have gone a little too far. Let's go back down just a tad. Yeah. So, what happened now, <coughs> you'll see this last one, there's a little, it gets a little skinnier with my channel. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back 
um, to my scaling and use this one and scale that down to 0.5 to get away from this end um, half a millimeter diamond it's really tiny but it's going to give me a nice flow okay um, I'm happy with that and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do exactly the same with my top channel um, and I'm going to follow the same curve with the same command array curve plus and I will get back as soon as I'm done with that one okay I have um, arrayed my diamond on the top curve as well let me just make one quick correction that this last diamond wasn't I think I said a half a millimeter that wasn't right it is um, 0.5 scaling factor of 3.8 millimeters so it's probably 1.9 almost a 2 millimeter diamond um, the same with the stop row up here so I have followed the curve and as you can see I'm still not too happy with them so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna use my manipulating tool and just do a little bit of final adjustment on these um, that one, that one, that one and that one and I'm just gonna use it on this plane just a little bit to get that right now it's not too critical because they move very little um, so that's good for that so that gives me enough space for a channel and I'm going to do the same with my bottom row uh, you know what I'm going to do I'm going to switch to my top view and do the final little bit of manipulation with my tool and just do it individually so let me pick this one and scoot that up uh, move it and let's see a little bit down and a little bit in that's good um, this one maybe just a touch down a little bit out that one just a touch down okay and I'm happy with that I'm happy with that this one cuts in on both sides a little that's fine um, I am gonna scoot this one just down and keep it on this plane maybe just a smidge and this one's just a smidgen. The key here is actually just to keep the same distance from the edge of this side a wall. Now what I'm going to do with this one too is bring it down a little more in towards the middle. Stay away from that outside wall for my channel. Okay, um, this one may be just a smidgen again. Uh, now I lost the... okay, that's fine. Okay, now what I'm going to do, let's go back to our uh, perspective view and see where we're at with this whole diamond arrangement. Let's do a quick um, render. Um, okay, we have the two rows placed on the surface. What I'm going to do now is I am going to make two solids that actually encapsulate these diamonds to cut my channel into this um, solid and for that we're gonna go to my top view let's pan this down we are gonna use a command called curve on surface untrimmed surface is this one body surface area um, pick points so we're gonna start at this end if I pick over here I'm probably gonna I might stand a chance of picking the bottom surface where it crosses over so I am gonna start there there there, there, and there. Enter. And I'm going to do the same curve on surface. Untrim surface. The points will be there, there, there. And the reason I've used curve on surface is because I want to edit these points. And I use that with um, curve on surface points on. So let me do two more. Curve on surface, untrimmed surface, and pick the points. One, two, three, four, five. Enter. And just one more. That's the surface. One, two, three, four, five. Enter. Okay. 
now it didn't grab that surface maybe it's lower I'll see where that one is so what I'm gonna do is edit these curves let's do the top one first um, I'm gonna use a command curve on surface point on I select this one enter and I can zoom in a little bit now and I can adjust these surface points Oop, excuse me not that and I can scoot these up actually the other thing I also can do is to uh, run a parallel curve to the edge of my of my um, model but I'll rather at this point adjust it by single curve lines so we pull it out just under the edge actually this one might even go a little bit there the only trouble I'm having, so I'm going to have to switch to wireframe here to see my control points. And this one come down a little right there. And one more. This one, curve on surface. Right there. Curve on surface. Let me just scoot this control point under, out underneath my diamond. That one there, and this one, this one doesn't want to cooperate that good. So let me keep this one there. Cut just underneath those two, those two, and bring this down. Um, actually, you know, this one is almost right. But I'm going to have to probably, I have no choice but to leave this one underneath my diamond. That's the only way I can get that curve in there. It's just a matter of playing with this curvature. Okay, the surface shaded. Now this curve is adjusted and it looks perfect right now. I like that. I'm going to do the same with these other four and then I am going to make a solid and then we'll be back to cut it out. Okay, I um, could not get this Boolean difference to work. It just kept failing on me every time. I think I must have a little bit of opening in this model. Nonetheless, um, it's not critical. What I'm going to do instead is uh, use these two cur these two surfaces that I have marked here in pink, and I will do an offset into my model and then just do it manually instead of doing a Boolean difference. That should be actually faster, but. Um, I am just going to show you the final model when I'm done with that. I'll cut the hole in for the bail. And uh, that should conclude this part, the last part of this tutorial. I will just show you the final piece. Um, I'm actually very happy the lines look really beautiful in this pennant. And all in all it came out very good and I'm very happy with it. Now I have to um, admit that when I, when I do a model like this for rapid prototyping, I will be a lot more careful and my surfaces should be a lot more accurate than what I did in this model. Um, but this is good for milling. It's, it's more than accurate enough for milling on the milling machine. Okay, let's conclude this last one. I, um, I cut all those uh, channels in. I uh, offset the surfaces, cut it into the pennant, into the, my model. I've also cut out my little bale in the back. Um, looking really good. Um, let's do a quick rendering. See where we're at. Uh, that looks very good. I'm happy with that. The diamonds fit nicely. One more angle. Somewhere there. A little dark, but it's good. And uh, thank you for watching. Um, we will go on and do a few other models um, throughout this next few weeks. So, um, we'll take you through step by step. Thank you for watching.